Hello and welcome to another episode of the Sparkles of Gold Astrology Manifesto podcast. My name is Nicolas Polimanakos, a.k.a. Sparkles of Gold. I'm recording this Sunday night, February 5th, 8 something at night on the West Coast. And uh, I will talk about some of the transits that are going to happen this week from the 5th to uh, Sunday the 12th. Um, I'll throw another couple other uh, uh, thoughts that I have about the current astrology too, maybe in all this. But um, yeah, I wasn't going to do this podcast. I always, I always, do I start my podcast by always saying that I wasn't going to do this, but because <laughs> uh, I, if some of you who follow my podcast know that I put something up in the last twenty four hours, a, a parking lot predictions episode one podcast I did on the fly with Greg Crawford. Um, in a parking lot of a grocery store, and I'm going to be doing more of those <laughs> this year whenever I run into an astrologer and we're in a parking lot. So I put that up and I was like, okay, I still got to do a transit thing because uh, there's some interesting has- aspects that happen this week. Um, and not only that, you know, while I'm making this, I see the moon here on my chart at 21 degrees Leo. If you don't know, we just are still in a full moon vibe. We had a full moon that happened earlier today on Sunday the 5th, a major, major full moon in, uh, with the sun in Aquarius and the moon in Leo and with the planet Uranus, the planet of shock and unpredictability in the middle of it all. And so we've had two days, two and a half days uh, before here filled with unpredictability a Mars Venus square that happened. It's still kind of flowing around. So a lot of expressing going on right now. And if you know uh, your chart, you'll know that if you have anything in the fixed signs of Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, you've probably been affected by this full moon. Um, and on a serious note, um, you know, several hours ago, there was a major like 7.9 magnitude earthquake in a part of Turkey and into Syria. And um, there are those who deal with the mundane astrology world um, who who look at situations like this. And this is definitely a Uranus moment of, of an unpredictable uh, earthquake, which they're all unpredictable. But a lot of times you'll see Uranus or Mars signatures in events like this. Um, where there is something that's shaken or cut or um, uh, something that's caustic and aggressive. So I want to say here in the beginning of this, because I know some astrology colleagues in Turkey, and I did send a message to several of them, and they're doing okay. They are luckily weren't in the heart of it. But um, I'm sending some prayers and some blessings to my brothers and sisters over there. Um, and... Um, and their challenges they are currently in. So let's get to, um, I talked about here the Sunday and this full moon and the remnants of it. And I think we're going to see remnants of it all this, this whole week. Um, I think a lot might have been expressed to, uh, you know, verbally. And, you know, with any full moon, it's tendency to, people are partying up, you know, they got that certain wildness to them. We know the Leo moon deals with creativity and more about one's personal expression. And with Uranus involved here, there's a rebellious quality to all this and not some also a surprising or a surprise or two that comes out of this. When we get into Monday, uh, the sixth, a moon's still in Leo, but we're, we're speaking of communication because I think communication is a big part of this week actually. And, um, you know, here's this full moon we're coming out of, and then we're also moving towards an interesting aspect with the planet Mercury, uh, which is still in the sign of Capricorn. It's been there since December. It went through a retrograde cycle. Now it's starting to move fast. Um, and Mercury at about 1026 a.m. Pacific time makes a what they call a sextile to the planet Neptune, which is currently in Pisces. And so they have a relationship called a sextile. It's a conduit of opportunity. It's a flash in the pan type of thing. And what you see here with Mercury in an earth sign uh, vibing with Neptune in a water sign is kind of a learning, uh, inquiring mind of Mercury connecting with the mystic and the creativity of Neptune in Pisces. So there's a dreaminess. There's a 
there's a, a need and want to expand upon thoughts in a watery emotional way and also in a um, creative way. And so when earth and, and water get together, they flow. And so that happens. And so some of the fallout that's happened from the full moon, we might have a way of being real with our words and practical, which is typically a Mercury and Capricorn way of doing. But here with Neptune and its influence, we have a, a, a creative and, and hope, compassionate uh, with our words and a uh, more deeper, profound way of thinking about what's happened in the last week. So that's pretty much exact on Monday the 6th. When we get to the 7th, Venus, which is in the sign of Pisces right now, um, and uh, uh, around 9, what did I write? 920, uh, 9.28 p.m., later on the 7th, makes a sextile to Uranus and Taurus in an Earth sign. So we have more water and more Earth lapping up against each other. Um, at this point, too, you know, earlier, uh, the day before, the moon went into Earth sign Virgo. So, but, but basically, the big transit of the day is Venus sextile Neptune. And, you know, Uranus brings a liberating vibe, you know, and brings its weirdness too and its radicalness. And it's doing it to the Venus in Pisces, which is about f freedom and love and compassion and divine love. And Venus is at, uh, at its vacation home in Pisces. It flows there, you know, it's ethereal and wants to connect in all ways through the senses in a sense to blend in through the senses with one in relationships or with the world or with one in, in envi one's environment. And Uranus brings a different way of doing this and liberating. And there's like a free love type of vibe going on, whether it's with another person or people or just how one is relating and engaging with the world. If you have anything in Pisces, you're going to feel a bit of a surprise or two here with this. Um, but, you know, Uranus is throwing its electrical energy onto Venus and Pisces, and they're digging it. There could be a little bit of a, of a, of a certain type of indulgence to the senses here, too, but just done in a more a progressive, inventive type of way. Um, again, freedom is involved in here. So when we get to the 8th Wednesday, um, here we have uh, the moon still in Virgo, and it's going to basically aspect a bunch of stuff here. We're going to have the moon opposite Neptune, and the moon's going to trine Mercury because the moon in Virgo is going to vibe with Mercury in in Capricorn. So you see there's kind of a vibe with communication here the next day and a detailedness in, in, uh, in a sense that the moon in Virgo is bringing to the Mercury in Capricorn that just went through its, you know, a couple days before of this creative visionary vibe. And then Virgo wants the details of how to do it and, and implement it and talk about it. Um, also, the moon on the 8th is going to, Virgo moon is going to trine Pluto in Capricorn. And if you don't know, Pluto right now is at around 28 degrees Capricorn, and it will soon leave Capricorn at the in, in March in uh, ingress and go into the sign of Aquarius. So anything, anything from right now uh, till then that any planet, the moon or whatever, that's going to aspect Pluto, it's something you need to pay attention to. And I'll get to that in a second. One of the reasons why, uh, when we get to the ninth, um, around, just as we get in on 1246-ish a.m. Pacific time on the 9th of Thursday, the moon ingresses into the air sign of Libra. And when we uh, get into uh, the 10th on the Friday, this is what I'm really getting to for this week. And it's at this point um, that Mercury in Capricorn that's been there for a while now, for several months, seems like seems like more than that, it is going to be together, conjunct, uh, at 28 degrees with Pluto and Capricorn. And this is a fundamental moment, I think, in this Mercury retrograde st story we've had with Mercury moving forward in Capricorn. But this is a bigger moment for Pluto and Capricorn. And when Pluto first entered Capricorn, it was in 2008. We're about to end a huge cycle with Pluto and Capricorn, Pluto going to Aquarius, but it's not as quick as you think 
But the degrees in the area that it is now is fundamental. And here Mercury now is in Plutonian realms. Here we have Mercury wants to probe. Mercury and Capricorn wants to probe and get in deep and exact with its mind and communication and thoughts. And Mercury, it has, it's cunning. It's cunning ways of being in Capricorn. It can be deep and strategic and plotting here with powerful Pluto and power struggles. And also with something like this, you know, this is where like deep profoundness comes along through through one's meditation, through thoughts, through conversations. And so you could see why I'm building up as a Mercury week this week, because if you have Mercury in several ways, it's, it's hit several planets. And here we are at this fundamental moment. And it's a big one because it's not just has to do with this week. It really on the generational end really has to do for the world and for culture of a story of Pluto and Capricorn and structures, power structures, people at the helm of power, people wielding power, uh, and, and what that's mean, what that has meant dealing with the authority ever since 2008, whether you want to talk about banking systems, government, your, your job, <laughs> the boss, these types of themes that Capricorn brings up the, 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 the need of having to build pillars and foundations and structure, um, Wherever it's at, that's and Pluto has been working subconsciously in the sign of Capricorn, wanting to uproot and change and, and regenerate certain structures. And when that happens, in the long process of it, this is when poisons come up to the surface, things that need to be purged, things that need to be thrown in the trash. And here, Mercury is hitting the fundamental point at the end of this transit. There is an ending feeling to this. There, there is a there is like a letting go too, in, in a metaphorical death, because we're also dealing with Pluto and its story of the underworld and what happens when one story or a person goes through the underworld and how one can get stuck there too because of a false sense of power and holding on to power. I can go back to uh, 2022 when Venus was in Capricorn and went and did its retrograde cycle. And I, I did a whole something, a video on this back a year ago where there was this whole thing a year plus ago with Venus and the underworld and power struggles and power triangles and manipulation and relationships, manipulation uh, types of things that happen in the sign of Capricorn and relationships or for anybody in general who has uh, things in their chart connected to this. Um, just remember here, there's been, there's a revealing happening this week. Something is revealed in a different type of way building up towards Friday. And a type of truth, a clear truth, and at times, because it's the sign of Capricorn and Mercury being there, this could be a brutal Plutonian type of truth. Now, I'm not trying to, you know, sound all dark, but it can be. It can be. And especially sometimes when we're dealing with a regenerational story that Pluto brings, that it first needs to get dark because that all types of things need to come up and show themselves. The mysteries revealed. People who've been pulling the strings and playing puppet master, the manipulation exposed. But at the same time, the other side, this is the place where one can dial in and have that pure revealing thought, reality thought that, that can bring about a new world, a new, a new thought, a new way of being. So this is a big deal. Uh, uh, careful about per persuasive situations and communication. If you have Mercury and Capricorn, if you've been affected by Mercury and Capricorn in the retrograde that happened the last couple of months, this is a chapter in the story. There's going to be some, a very persuasive power moment that's happening here, a negotiating moment at the table. And it's just like, okay, is this the truth or not? And if it is, you know, do I do this? And one has to stick to their own code, their own ethics, and also examine that for one last time here. Because that's basically what happens with a Pluto transit. You're exa examining something on a deep level, especially of the mind, and it being in a Saturn ruled sign that it's Capricorn. So uh, that's what's up with Mercury Pluto. It's no joke. We get in. The interesting thing about this and why I'm saying it's a Mercury week is because the next day on Saturday the 11th, it's not even, it's not even less than a day. 
Mercury uh, leaves the sign of Capricorn finally and enters in and ingresses into the sign of Aquarius at around 3.22 a.m. on the 11th of February. And there's a release here. You see, it's like it went through the gates of Pluto and the underworld Mercury and its final part, final day of the transit. And it goes right into Aquarius right after its conjunction with Pluto. So there is a release. The mind is let free. There, there, it's not on lockdown. There isn't the power struggle. There, there, there is a spontaneity and an openness and, and, and a need for freedom of the mind. And what comes along with that is... The inventiveness with it being a Mercury being in a situation like that. Mercury does like to be in the air sign of Aquarius. It's a scientific way of of being of looking at things, thinking of things, the objectivity of things, the inventiveness, and definitely the word new. So you could see now why. Okay, I haven't named this podcast yet. I'm gonna do something with Mercury. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call it something to do with Hermes and Mercury. Some sort of quip I'll come up with. But that happens. That Mercury ingress happens on the 11th, and it's interesting here too because Mercury is going in a sign of Aquarius, and currently Saturn's in the sign of Aquarius at 27 degrees on that day. The Sun, obviously, we're in Aquarius birthdays, but Mercury is gonna go over all the degrees and go through Aquarius and pretty much almost round up and trigger points that have to do with the Saturn and Aquarius story that's been since 2020. And Saturn will be leaving Aquarius and going into Pisces on March 7th. So here's another type of ending. Eventually, Mercury is going to hit the sun or, or, or hit Saturn, I mean, be conjunct. That's for another podcast. But there is an interesting story here of, a, of an end of a story of a graduating Saturn story. Did, did you do the Saturn work in the Aquarius part of your chart? And for the next several weeks, Mercury will be hitting upon that and bringing that up. The new things that you came up with, the, the diff- alternative ways of thinking and seeing and communicating, uh, uh, how well did you study them? How well did you implement them? And you're going to see this in the Aquarius part of your chart to see what needs to be tweaked or what last final couple things need to be done in the Aquarius part of your chart because of Saturn. So saying that, uh, something else, a couple things, a couple other things I will mention on the 11th is Mars and Gemini is making a sextile to Chiron and Aries, which is a good thing. We have another way of thinking and, 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 and pondering how to deal with, with vulnerability and the wounds of Chiron and Aries. I'm throwing this in there for those of you who've been listening to me and know that I like to talk about this stuff. There's, uh, uh, Mars and Aries is going to show some different ways, different thoughts, different pathways for for Chiron and Aries to think about how to deal with wounds and the healing of them and 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 take a higher mind uh, type of view and kind of test uh, a kind of an A and B test of things of dealing with the current and ongoing story of Chiron and Aries. This is a good thing. When we get to the like uh, that happens at 10:02 a.m., but not too long after that, 10:34 a.m., the moon enters probing, mysterious, intense, sometimes brooding Scorpio. Uh, we get to the 12th, which is the Sunday, and I will tell you that I always like to say this: the moon in Scorpio at about 2:40. 2 p.m. Pacific is going to be opposite Uranus and Taurus, which is always, always an interesting part of the month, considering how big Uranus is playing in Taurus in a lot of transits in the last year and a half with the full moon that just happened, with the eclipses that have happened for the last year and a half plus or a year and a half, and the upcoming eclipses that will happen in May. Um, This 15-degree area, is huge and it's the midpoint uh, of the Uranus and Taurus transit. Any of you who have degrees between 13 and let's say 17 degrees fixed, you always wa- want to watch the Scorpio moon and its movements because it's going to move over the south node in Scorpio, then eventually oppose the Uranus and Taurus. So, for those people specifically, uh, know and pay attention to this there's always some sort of like electrical out of the blue emotional thing that get, blows out of scorpio and it's something <laughs> to pay attention to um i'll end it there with with the weekly here and i won't go too long as uh, usually i usually go 10 minutes more but 
What I do want to say is, um, you know, I, I that Sunday the twelfth is kind of gearing up for the week after, and hopefully I do a podcast on this. But like right after on Valentine's Day in the day or fourteenth the fifteenth, you basically can have Venus and Pisces moving towards a conjunction with Neptune and Pisces. Total dream world time with love and, and illusions and fantasy, and then within twenty four hours you're going to have a Sun Saturn conjunction that happens in Aquarius. And and here is where one is going to see if if some of the dreaminess, some of the creativity, some of this Piscean story. And remember, Jupiter was in Pisces pretty much all of last year. And so the Pisces part of your chart is going to be accessed here next week, uh, a little bit this week, but into next week. But the Saturn and Sun story the day after in Aquarius is going to want to make things a reality. It's going to take its scientific brain and bring some of the creativity and that dream in the, into somewhere uh that could be tangible and real. I'll hopefully do a podcast on this next week. It's a, it's actually in the week after that I'm talking about 13, 14th, 15th, 16th is such a w- interesting 48 hours uh, in, of astrology, but just a little clue for the week after. Um, you know, if I, I just, I have a Venus and Pisces video. You could check up on YouTube. I just did a 12 rising. I did a video for each rising sign on YouTube and, and the four like important kind of, uh, transits of the month for each rising sign for the month of February. You can go check that out on my YouTube channel, Sparkles of Gold Astrology. Um, and yeah, I'll end it there. Um, I want to send uh, a message out to those who have been messaging me as of late um, and um, want, who have wanted to get sessions. And uh, you can go to my website and look at my booking part there. You can look at the calendar. I know sometimes some of you can't afford my regular fees and sometimes I offer discounts if it's a type of thing where you you know you feel like you know you need you're challenged in some sort of way and you really need a session if you contact me through my website we can come up with a deal I'm always down to talk and be real I need to get paid for what I do at the same time I don't like to shut people out so I always try to find sometimes a middle ground with people if they really truly need a session so you can go to my website sparklesofgold.com Besides all that, it, I'm I, I I have this sense I have this sense on this late full moon night here on Sunday that um, there's no going back. There's no going back here from some of the stories in the last year, and this full moon that just happened. It's like this this door is open for the new year, and there's these trailing stories and narratives. But nothing's ever going to be the same. So however you're doing it and however you're trying to hold up or or if you got that gleam in your eye and you see the path, go for it. And if you're stuck and you're having some challenges and problems and you're in a place of mourning and grief, sit there and do what you have to do to get through it, to take care of it, and let it process. For me, on a personal level, I I have this electric, unpredictable thing running through my veins right now and you know doing these podcasts doing sessions with clients and the youtube that i'm trying to build in my practice but i almost feel like there's something else in my world and i don't know what it is yet and i'm trying to focus on my own personal world to be healthy and to be um, centered um, and changing my habits and patterns so i can keep doing this at a, on a deep level you know so it, those are the things surging through my brain. And, and part of it is, too, I think, coming out of a, uh, years of COVID and the, what the world is doing and people interacting in certain ways. But you're not the same. It's not what it used to be. Or, in a, or you got used to being a certain way because of COVID and other ways culture and society has been interacting in person or on the Internet. So I think it's fundamental to, to take a step here this week after this full moon and to understand and to look at your world, your immediate world, what you do to survive, to keep yourself, you know, sane if possible. And then everything after that, because I, once we get through this month, we have major shifts again with Pluto and Saturn in March. And then in May with eclipses and then Jupiter entering a new sign, it's going to happen quick here after this week. So know where you're going at least. If you need your sword and shield, you wield it. But hey, don't be afraid to dream and to follow the dream. My dream, 
I know part of it, but there's something around me. I feel it. Something new is about to happen. Something's about to enter my world. And I'm trying to be ready and waiting and alert to grab hold of it. So until next time, I'll see you and hear you or listen to me. (laughs) Did that make any sense? On the next podcast.